Hi, my name is Gwanda Murphy. I'm a diagnosis with the Argon for the Belfast Trust, and this is my story. See, I've always wanted to be a very younger boy. In school, I was a bit unsure as to what I wanted to do. I've always been there all my life. I've always like, sort of a staff that I just didn't know what I could do. I got to help the doctors see if the patients like, make them better and stuff. I try not to say to the patients that I'm deaf because I think sometimes deaf is a scary word for the hearing people. So I just say, oh sorry, I didn't hear that so well. You hear a production of your wrist, is that right? Yeah. I'm just going to get you sitting over here. Some of the patients have been really good. They go, oh, why are you there? Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's the sign that the end of the x-ray and it just feels so much better. I do love working in the Mayday Hospital. It's like a really small, friendly place, so I get really into it. And they've been so good to me. Like, it's only time for working there. They were, like, being very good about my deafness. So they would like ask me questions about it and I just realised the more that I talk about it, the more they're comfortable with it and they understand it better. Oh. I was growing up speaking because my family were all hearing, so I was the only deaf person. I never actually learned sign language until I was about 15 because there were other people who were deaf as well, so I just became more interested in that. I went to sign language classes and stuff, but I'm not the best at sign language. It's really good, like nice out and stuff, because like we can just chill and we can talk about it, have a full on conversation. But hearing people be like, how are they talking in this place? It's so loud in here. <laughs> All my life, I have had struggles, but I've just always tried to find ways to overcome them. Like, for example, I like to talk to my parents on the phone and try to FaceTime them, because then it means that I can live with them, which is like the big thing for me. <laughs> I've just never let my deafness stop me. Why should it? I live with a black man who's deaf as well. So it feels like in a way, oh, I don't have to put my hands on straight away in the morning. It's really good because he's like easy to communicate with. Like he knows the way about me to get my attention first. I drive to work every day. Some hearing people seem to think that deaf people can't drive, but for me, I use two more, so I have one more that helps me lift three people sitting in the front seat or the back seat, and then it means that I can look at the room at the same time. I do listen to music in the car. If a song comes on that I really like, then I would know it, but that doesn't mean that I can hear the voice of the song. I've looked up the song before on YouTube with the lyrics on it. Sometimes I might be able to sing along to the chorus, but it'd be like totally out of tune. Yeah. Are you going to take her in? Yeah, I'll take her into that room. Okay. That's grand. Yeah. All right. Hello, this is Fonia from Extra. Hi, this is just Corin down in recess. We have a portable chest x ray needs done in about five minutes. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I'll be on my way now. I just feel the more I talk to people about my deafness, the more that I'm open about it and like they can just ask me any questions at all, that they're more understanding. So I'm happy enough doing that if it means that there'll be a world where there's less bad for deaf people. Just bring your arm to the side. Have that. That's just done again for a minute. I might not be able to hear as well as other people. But at the end of the day, I'm no different than anybody else. I'm just like you.